Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to a beautiful night here in Houston, Texas. All right, so the one thing that I actually love about uh, car audio is that there is just so much to choose from. Any speaker can fit any, you know, trunk, a little bit of customization. I, I personally, I think this is the best sub on the market, except for weight, of course. You know, space saving, sound quality, and loudness, sound pressure. Its major claim to fame is that it has a 1.15 inch excursion, uh, meaning that the sub can move out 1.15 inches and it can actually move in 1.15 inches. Uh, just for comparison, a 12W3, it has 0.55, I think, inches of um, excursion. So this actually moves twice as much out and in than a 12W3. And honestly, that, that is crazy. It won't distort at lower frequencies. So when, you hit, when your bass hits that really low, low, low notes, um, it's gonna sound super clean. I went with the port enclosure to make it even louder. Um, it does take a little bit of the sound quality away, but honestly, I, I can't imagine what it sounds like in a sealed enclosure. I mean, the quality is just quite amazing for this uh, subwoofer. In terms of loudness, this is pretty close to a pair of uh, 12W3s. Um, this will still outplay sound quality wise against a pair of uh, 12W3s. The only thing I think it'll get beat with is two 12, uh, 15W3s. I've had two 15W3s in my car before and they are super loud. It was in a sealed box and the notes were like ridiculously accurate as well. Oh, my dog's chilling next to me. Here's my little Shih Tzu. I think you guys saw my Beagle before. I'm just smoochy. Oh, good, good girl. I personally like it space saving as well, uh, and uh, it just really is a great sub. Of course, the price, major downfall there. Uh, love to hear from you guys, see what you have to say, and uh, of course, uh, if you like the video, like and subscribe. All right, guys, well, we're at the front of my car. Uh, it's pretty standard layout. I would also seal this with caulking, or I'd put some rubber on the bottom here to seal off the hole. Um, that's probably what I'll do, actually, when I get the time. They found a grommet right there on the passenger side. Uh, right there, they basically just uh, pulled it out and they stuck the 4 gauge wire right through there. It's pretty loosely fitting there, so you don't have to worry about the wire getting, uh, I guess, uh, pressured up against something sharp, which would eventually cut it and cause a major issue. Um, I suggest the minimum gauge wire you get is 4 gauge, don't get 8 gauge. Uh, my 1000 watt JX amplifier is, it's, they just custom screwed it into the rear deck. It's not very fancy at all. Basically, the, the wiring. Uh, the ground cable, uh, you want to keep that as short as possible. One thing that you may have to do that they may not do is you have to sand the primer off the metal to make sure there's bare metal to bare metal connection between the ground cable and the rear deck. In order to power the LC2i, they they actually double tapped my uh, the 4 gauge power wire going into the sub and they also double tapped the ground wire. I personally would do a uh, distribution block. Um, in, I would have two distribution blocks, one for the ground and one for the power. And of course, I would from there, I would have a 4-gauge wire going into my amplifier um, and a 4-gauge wire going into my uh, amplifier ground. And then I would do the same for my LC2i, but it would be the 12-gauge wire. Another thing that they did was they used 12-gauge uh, speaker wire to power and ground the LC2i. Not a big fan of that. It's working just fine because it's super low voltage. Um, but I would use power wire regardless. Um, one more thing that they forgot to do is they didn't put an inline fuse between the power source and the LC2i. So I have a 12 gauge inline fuse as well. And of course from the LC2i to the uh, sub, I have a uh, you know RCA cable. Um, I use Monster Cable. Um, I'm kind of glad that I did. I, I really love Monster Cable. I think they're probably the best. And then for speaker wire, I used uh, Rockford Fosgate. And I'm pretty sure the power wire is um, Kicker, because I remember Kicker usually puts out the cheapest uh, quality, I would say, power wire, power cables. Um, but I'll put everything in the links below. Um, usually I'll typically search for you guys on eBay and Amazon to find the best deals. And then, uh, of course, uh, if you want to support the channel, please buy something through those links. And then uh, I get paid a small percentage, percentage, like 1 or 2%, which is not really that much, but hey, something is better than nothing. One thing that you could do is connect the LC2i to the subwoofer wiring. Uh, my guess is the professional company that I hired to do it, they purposely did it to the full range because the subwoofer cable is probably has really bad cutoffs. Um, they probably cut off the low end and the high end to protect the subwoofer from distorting and uh, I guess breaking when you turn the volume up. You can try to connect it to the subwoofer signal cable, but it's probably best to do what my guys did and connect it to the full um, range sound. The LC2i it puts out a very clean signal to the subwoofer and you can tune the sub from there. Another thing I want to suggest is your gain. Uh, never turn the subwoofer gain, in my opinion, over 50%. I never turn it more than halfway. It protects the sub from overheating and popping and breaking fuses. Uh, protects your subwoofer as well. 
from uh, any type of major distortion that could uh, cause uh, mechanical damage. All right, well, anyways, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I'm gonna take my car for a drive, enjoy the speaker. Talking about it so much kind of makes me wanna enjoy the car a little bit more. <laughs> but, uh, you know, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys uh, liking and subscribing to my channel, and I look forward to uh, putting out more videos. All right, guys, talk to you later. Bye-bye.